morning everyone welcome to the merry garden at the monastery this is located at jamaica estate run by passionist priest of the immaculate conception so we are here today inside the merry garden and we have someone here who is a well-renowned horticulturist uh, biologist botanist and he is someone that I work with and will help me in the Mary Garden at St. John's. And so I would like everyone to welcome Dr. Richard Stalter. Hello, Dr. Richard. Thank you Hi. so much for coming here today. Thank you. Can I thank you for the beautiful weather that we have this afternoon? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, look, Dr. Richard, this is one year ago now this has been one year can you believe that what a beautiful beautiful setting people can visit the garden <coughs> spiritually and as a place to uh, rest the benches so well laid out oh, yeah. such a very very pleasant and cheerful seems, place yeah it seems that the plants have established themselves now they've done very exceptionally well, well. Yeah. actually at we are at the highest peak of Long Island and Queens. Now, can you tell us something about the area where we're standing right now? I would be pleased to. The area that we're standing is a terminal moraine of the Wisconsin Glacier. 18 to 20,000 years ago, this area was covered by a massive sheet of ice. And since that time, it's retreated. Is that from Canada? Are you talking about Yes, in other words, from Canada. We have been having, um, you know, great miracles with the soil. No, I think the miracles here are the workings of yourself <laughs> and also of the priest here at the monastery. Yeah. They've maintained the garden, and the garden is absolutely beautiful. We have conifers here. Mm -hmm. This is a low-growing juniper ideal because it will be green the year round. Uh, the plants that are in flower are impatience. Yes. They're attractive but they won't be with us. Yeah for quite a while. As soon as Jack Frost comes and nips them uh, there are azaleas and these will bloom in the spring. Again the way the garden has been established is that there will be flowers here during the growing season. It's ideal. These arborvitae can grow up to a meter in one year. And in fact, in a few years, probably they'll be selectively removed because they have grown so tall and so wide. But right now, <laughs> the garden is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, look at these trees, uh, Dr. Richard. We are surrounded by different kinds of trees. Most of these trees here yeah. are Norway maples. Norway maples. Norway okay. maples. Yes. Let Acer me get that okay, as Acer platinoides, but more importantly, like us, uh -huh. these are not native. In fact, many of the plants in New York are not native to the area. Roughly 35% of New York State's uh -huh plant species are not native to the region. But once they get established and naturalized, then they are part of the environment. And the Norway maple thrives Norway here. Maple. This, so you would call this maple? The big tall tree too, it's more Norway maple. Norway maple. And you can see the Norway maple seedlings in this area. They've mm -hmm. done very, very well so here. So you would call this side also all Northern maples. Norway maples. Norway maples. Norway maples. Okay. Why is that so? How did it get transplanted to New York? Where did, where did they come from? Okay. Why were they planted here? They were planted here because they grow very, very quickly. They have beautiful foliage uh -huh. in the fall. Unfortunately, though, they are the, one of the first trees to leaf out in the spring and the last to lose its leaves in the fall. Now why is that a bad thing? It's a bad thing for the native vegetation because many of the low-growing plants in the spring 
need that small window of sunlight oh, to see. store carbon uh -huh. that enables them to grow and survive from year to year. If there's no sun, there's no food for the plants, and then these plants so they die. will die. Because oh, you can see how dark it is under these yeah, yeah. Norway maples. So if you were to choose some uh, evergreens, what would you put here if you, if you know that these are surrounded by maple trees? I would Norway say maple. that uh, I would say that your choice of plants here is an excellent one. Uh, oh, okay, thank you. The <laughs> plants have done very, very well. Yes. Mm -hmm. If they were brown and didn't look mm -hmm. healthy, mm -hmm. then it would be blatantly obvious mm -hmm. that the plants at the Merry Garden were a poor choice. Yeah, we had but, other plants before, but now they're gone, and then new sp new plants are being brought in. No, you've done an excellent job. <laughs> You Excellent know. job because you have evergreen plants. And then you have the They're attractive. The azaleas are attractive. Mm -hmm. They'll flower in the spring. Yes. And they come back. All they, of these are perennials. We try as much. All of these are, are perennials mm -hmm. with the exception over here of the impatiens. And they're easily planted yeah. year after year after yes. year. In fact, a few years ago, the impatiens were blighted. And because they were blighted, they were not sold in nurseries, mm -hmm. but seemingly maybe they uh, uh, bred light resistant impatiens. Mm -hmm. And again, the beauty of the impatiens is their mm -hmm. flowers are very, very attractive, the foliage is attractive, and that would certainly be appropriate for the Merry Garden. I noticed that on that side, on that first quadrant, we have more flowers. flowers okay, here. more flowers because you have more sun Sunlight there, there than you have over here. Yeah, okay. you look at the shade of our Norway maple. Yes. Okay. So that is probably the most logical explanation mm -hmm. as to why the impatience is doing so much better there, better where it there. receives a bit more yeah. sun than over here where they're growing in the shade. But what these, did you call this? Uh, Okay. Pom poms. <laughs> they call it pom poms. Okay. This is a this juniper. One. Juniper. A okay. juniper. And juniper. in fact, maybe we shouldn't do this, but if you taste the fruits of this juniper, go pick one and taste one. Okay. Why? <laughs> it tastes. In fact, how do they flavor gin? They a flavor gin? gin with juniper berries. Juniper the, berries. The <laughs> Hello, juniper. <laughs> How does it taste, Father? It's, it's, it's like... Um, A gin. No. It's like gin. Okay. We are here to discuss... Oh, this is, uh, this is lavender. Right. Uh, lavender or rosemary. rosemary. We try to grow some of these seeds that people in our Roger Bacon Scientific Honor Society, uh -huh. they'll sell these. Some of the proceeds will be used for uh, the society mm -hmm. and other I would probably be uh, just donated to the university yeah. to be used as they see fit. You see, Dr. Richard is also um, the uh, coordinator of the uh, organic garden at St. Mm. John's. Oh, oh. That's good. Uh, we, uh, I do the Mary Garden, he does the <laughs> organic community garden. And then we, he has many followers, students, and my students too. We go to his lab, laboratory, we plant seeds, we bring them to the greenhouse right. and then from the greenhouse we somebody takes care of them students also and then some are being researched for medicine by pharmacy students right and then when it they're ready to go out then they bring them to the organic garden and the whole year we have vegetables kale spinach green peas and again, the beauty about that is uh, yes. the food that's produced there goes to the Bread and Life Kitchen yep. in Brooklyn. Yes. And so it gives the students an opportunity for a service uh, learning experience yes. and just a very, very good experience. Different crops at different times. And uh, we usually, as Craig uh, mentioned, will start the seeds in the early spring get them out in the garden probably beginning in April some of the cold hardy plants and then tomatoes and peppers go in later on and then uh, weekly the plants are harvested and taken over to the bread and life kitchen in Brooklyn and that so runs all through the summer through early fall oh, and now weird. the garden is done with because, yeah, it's, <laughs> because it's already in the fall 
Bread and Life Kitchen. Yes. They feed about a thousand homeless people. See, every day. Yeah. This is in, in New York, in Manhattan or Brooklyn? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. So it's the students. They, most of my students, we collect scraps from the different cafeterias. Even coffee uh, resid residues, we collect them. Starbucks, uh, what do you call this? The where do you put the uh, coffee grounds? Coffee grounds, yeah. We collect them, all these noodles and everything, and then we compose them to make our own soil. And it smells like Starbucks. <laughs> 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 and right. it's soft. It's clean. It's dark in color. It's very healthy. And these are also. The, okay, this is a low-growing juniper. These, juniper. these are ideal because they're not going to get tall, but they spread out. It's almost like they're a horizontal yeah. juniper. They make excellent ground cover. Mm -hmm, yeah. In fact, the house of sh I have in New Jersey, I planted these because they're ideal. They're, they're green, they're attractive, they'll shade out weeds, and they're perfect, absolutely perfect, for the Mary Garden. In fact, these plants are called Gaylardia. It's a member of the Asteraceae family. And again, attractive. It'll keep blooming until mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until frost. Yeah. In fact, it may even be able to oh, tolerate okay. a small okay. amount of frost. Did you know that Mary Garden started in a monastery? Wow. That has always been the the idea. It was right. the monks who really started all these enclosed gardens. What you have here is an oasis. Mm -hmm. An oasis. This you, you just wouldn't know that you're here in Queens. Yes, in an urban landscape. In yes. an urban landscape, because right, this, because yeah. it's, it's gorgeous. And yeah. I'm making derogatory comments about our Norway maple, but they provide a very, very nice screen. Mm -hmm. You'd have to look to see the buildings outside yeah, of this area. Yeah. You're in enclosure. But you're in, yes, yeah. absolutely. So what we have here is an oasis in Queens. Mm -hmm.